term life insurance. What is term life? How does it work? Aloha, I'm Stan Cox, principal broker and strategist with SC Finance Strategies and Insurance Consultants. I'm also the author of the books on the tax-free cash growth warehouse strategy, and I'm the managing director of the Hawaii Financial Freethinkers Academy, a nonprofit financial literacy education organization. In this video, I'm going to focus on term life insurance, and hopefully I'll answer all the questions you have about term life. And if you find this video to be helpful, please like the video and subscribe to this channel. Also, please post your questions and comments here. Term life is one of the main categories of life insurance. The other main categories are whole life, universal life, which includes IUL, GUL, and VUL. I'll go into depth about those in my video on what is universal life. And there is funeral insurance, also known as final expense insurance. Final expense is a kind of a subtype of whole life, but it's more unlike whole life than it is like whole life in, and that I'm going to treat it separately. So term life is the cheapest type of life insurance. The reason for that is because it includes the least amount of benefits for the insured. It is the very basic stripped down and limited life insurance offer. The basic idea of life insurance is that the insurance company or provider promises to mitigate the financial risk and damage resulting in the death of the insured person. Typically, this is phrased as the risk of dying too soon. And that makes sense because, especially in the case of the breadwinner of the household, the income that that person provides from their working is dependent on by the other members of the household, right? So when that person dies, that income presumably stops, leaving the rest of the household in a financial bind. So life insurance at its most basic level, in return for premiums paid to the provider, will pay to the beneficiaries of the life insurance policy a sum of money that was agreed to and contracted for by means of the insurance policy. That's the most basic benefit and purpose of life insurance. And term life insurance does just that. Most term life policies also have a provision included that will pay out to the owner of the policy a percentage of the death benefit in the case where the insured person becomes disabled and loses the ability to perform at least three of the five essential tasks of living. These five essential tasks are dressing, walking, grooming, toileting, and feeding oneself. When a person cannot perform three of those tasks without help, they are deemed disabled. Or if the insured person is diagnosed with a critical illness and they are not expected to live more than 12 months from the time of diagnosis, a percentage of the death benefit may be paid to the owner of the policy. This provision is called a living benefits right and is typically included at no extra charge. It's a pretty standard benefit with most all life insurance policies. But that's it with term life insurance. There's a financial death benefit. Part of that may be paid before the insured person dies if they become disabled or are diagnosed with a terminal illness. There is no cash value with term life. So it really has no value as a financial asset to the owner of the policy. And as the name implies, term life is only for a limited duration of time. So term life only obligates the insurance company to pay the death benefit for a limited number of years, usually 10, 20, or 30 years. So because term life is limited to just a death benefit for the beneficiaries and is limited to a specified number of years, it carries the lowest premium for the amount of death benefit that it guarantees. And here's an interesting fact. I won't go into depth about actuarial science, but essentially actuarial science is the science of large numbers applied to human mortality. That is the likelihood of a person dying 
given a number of parameters. For example, age, health condition, occupation, where they live, et cetera. As with all except guaranteed issue or guaranteed acceptance versions of life insurance, which have their own set of limitations, term life insurance requires a medical exam as part of the requirements for approval for a policy. The results of the medical exam, along with answers to a series of medical history and other questions, go to the underwriting department of the insurance company. That is where all the data is evaluated by use of actuarial science to determine the actual risk that the insurance company is taking on by issuing the life insurance on the person to be insured. The interesting fact I, I referred to is this. If underwriting determines that a person is likely to die in 25 years, they will not issue a 30-year term policy. They may offer a 20-year term, but definitely not a 30-year. It is for that reason that about 98% of all term life insurance policies terminate before the insured person dies. As a result, about 98% of all term insurance policies that are issued never pay out the death benefit. And that is another reason why term life insurance carries the lowest premium. So what happens when a term life policy expires? Well, nothing, really. There's no longer any life insurance. And since term life never grows any cash value, there's no cash value delivered to the owner of the, at the end of the term. Some providers will offer a return of premium rider with a term policy. There is a premium fee for that rider. And what that will do is when the policy ends, terminates, the amount of premiums paid for the policy will be returned to the owner. There will be no interest gained for the owner, just the amount paid in will be returned. Then when that policy is expired, if the person wants to continue to have life insurance, they will need to buy a new policy. And then they will be 10, 15, or 20 years old or more older. Their health may or may not be as good as it was when they first got the previous policy. But even if their health is still good, the cost of life insurance will now be several times greater than it was when the previous policy was purchased because they're older. And that's just the nature of the product. No bells, no whistles, no cash value, just annually increasing cost of insurance. On that cost of insurance, most insurance companies will offer term insurance with a level term or a level premium. That is, the premium will remain constant for the duration of the term. So if a 30-year-old in excellent health buys a 20-year level term policy and the premium is $500 per year, it will stay at $500 per year for the entire 20 years. How that works is, while the cost of insurance may be just $100 the first year, and then each year the cost of insurance increases so that by the 20th year, the cost of insurance is actually $800 or more, instead of starting at $100 and increasing each year the premium, the total of all premiums is averaged over the 20 years and the premium assigned accordingly. That's term life insurance. That's it. So I hope you enjoyed this. I hope it made sense to you and I hope that it was helpful for you to understand term insurance better. So if you'd like more information about uh, infinite banking, the tax-free cash growth warehouse, or any of these other items about life insurance, that's what this channel is all about. So go ahead and browse around, check out some of the videos. And you have questions, post them. And if you like this, this uh, video, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. You have questions, we have answers. We look forward to helping you. But for now, mahalo for watching.